Hey, how's it going, everybody? If you're new here, welcome in. And if you've been here before, welcome back. I'm Roll Shambo, connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny, or as I'm becoming known, connoisseur of all things sharp and hard to take pictures of because black on black, like this painting knives X series Apache is hard to take pictures of. In fact, one of the primary reasons why I took this with me when I went on a hiking trip over the 4th of July weekend earlier this month was so that I could take a good picture without a dark background, without having to resort to putting this on a weird surface in my house. And guys, I got to tell you, as much as I love this knife, I hate how hard it is to take a picture of it. Facts. Would I still buy it? Yes, I would. Now, Chances are that if you've been subscribed to my channel, you may have seen the short overview, and I'm gonna call it an overview because that's what it was, that I did of this knife. It was about four minutes long and it was not highly popular. I don't think that <clears throat> YouTube put a whole lot of, you know, emphasis on recommending this video because the thumbnail was just kind of hard to see the picture of because it's black on black and it was on a dark surface. So. Yeah, it got a massive whopping 200 views in a month and a half, which is not great. And in that video, I asked people, if you'd like to see a full review, leave a comment down below. And I got a whopping two people that commented. The first person said, I don't like black micarta. Mm. I hear you. The second person said, yeah, full review. So. One person is good enough for me because when two people comment and one of them wants an, a full review, guess what? 50% is good enough. So I'm going to flip this camera around and we're going to do a full review on this Panion Knives X-Series Apache. Let's go. This is the Pena X-Series Apache. And I got to tell you that this knife is wonderful for many different reasons, but before I get into that, because I know that there are those of you that just really want to know the specs of this bad boy, I'll go over them for you. And you know what? I'll also make sure to list them right there. So if I do move too fast, feel free to just pause the video and check the specs. According to Blade HQ, this knife has an overall length of six and a half inches. The blade length is just shy of three inches and it weighs about three ounces. The blade itself is a really good CPM M4. In fact, you can only get the CPM M4 if you get the Blade HQ exclusive. Now, I know that I did a video on this already. Uh, it just turns out that uh, it wasn't a very long one. It was an overview right after I got it. You know, I was still in the honeymoon phase, so I hadn't had any chances so far to really you know, get a feel for it. Since then, I've taken it on a hiking trip over 4th of July weekend in Southern Colorado. I hiked over 20 miles with this guy and it was used for things like feather sticking. It was used for opening packages and meals and overall cutting twine and rope. And I can tell you that this performs really well. I haven't had to sharpen it. It's still really sharp. It's a flat grind on this edge. And there is a nice swedge at the top. So not that I would say that this blade stock is super thick, but that swedge does help, you know, getting through materials. And also, you know, talking about the materials before I get too deep into that, this knife has black micarta with titanium bolster. It is a bolster lock. So basically it's a frame lock with uh, extra handle material over it. Not quite a liner lock, not quite a frame lock. The pocket clip is not deep carry, but it's also not something that I mind terribly. It's thick, it's milled, it's titanium, and it matches this titanium backspacer. Have I, have I ever mentioned how much I love titanium backspacers? Like, geez, it's just kind of my thing. Now, this micarta is not very, shall I say, texturized. It's very smooth. It, it's really nice that the handle scales flare out like this because it really forces you into the saber grip and it's a really nice utility grip. 
The blade is just long enough where you don't feel like you're really missing something from utility cuts, but you can also put your finger across the spine of the blade and you can do draw cuts really well. Also, the saber grind, like I said, is really good for, or excuse me, the saber grip is really good for, you know, feather sticking. So, you know, if you're trying to start fire, you need to make sure that you have something that's going to catch fire really quickly. Feather sticking is really good for that. And this knife does a great job. This is really kind of a mature person's everyday carry. You know, it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. It doesn't have like these ludicrous design lines. And it just, it makes sense. This is the sensible man's EDC or woman. Did I mention that this could be carried in women's pockets? You know how I know? Because it fits in my fifth pocket. That is the small pocket, right hand side of your jeans, inside your bigger pocket. Otherwise known as women's regular pockets. But yeah, so if you wanted to carry a bigger knife, like let's say that you have something like this. And well, this is a great time to do a comparison. So let's say that you have something like the Spider Co. Smock and you wanted to carry both, you could do that. And then you have a bigger knife in the smock in your regular pocket, and you've got this Pena Apache in your fifth pocket or in your back pocket, and they work in tandem. You know, you could use this easily as a main knife, or you could use it as a backup, and it's gonna work really well for both of those instances. Did I mention that, de that the design lines on this knife were really clean? This reminds me of and of a dad's type of carry. He shows up at the PTA and Karen's daughter has gum in her hair and guess what? The scissors were put away, but you've got your knife and you can get the job done because that's exactly what a dad would use a knife for. Things like getting gum out of hair and you know, being the one with a knife when someone asks, does anyone have a knife? This is the knife that responds to the call. It answers the call each and every time. Now, I'll be 100% honest with you. I'm not a huge fan of the Black Micarta myself. I know in my intro, I did kind of make fun of the one comment that was like, I don't like Black Micarta. You know, it's not my favorite either. But you know what I really do like is the CPM M4. I have stropped it because every time I get a brand new knife, the factory edge always seems like they sharpened it, but they didn't really strop it. Maybe they just don't hone it to a certain point but stropping it always brings out that little bit of extra performance. And on a knife like this, that you're gonna be using specifically for utility. You're not gonna be disappointed with that. Let's talk about the action. This is rolling off of ball bearings and it does a great job. I'm not a huge front flipper guy. I, I have other front flipper knives and I'm just not super good at it, but this one is very easy to do that with because of the location and the extra jimping. So check this out. This is my offhand. I am right-handed. This is my left hand. And it fires out with authority. Vice versa, you can also do an over-the-top top flipper type opening, which is very satisfying as well. Uh, you can also roll it out, you know, like that if you want to be a little less, uh, you know, <laughs> a little less alarming, I guess. It's funny, when you pull out a knife around other people that aren't knife people, the, the more authority you flick it out with, the more scared they get. Like, oh my God, will you someone save me? He's got a knife. Yes, I have a tool. It's because I like to be prepared. Who doesn't? But yeah, overall, the design is nice. It fits well in the hand, and I can get a full four finger grip, even with these big meaty hands. You know, I. For, the, for a while, I used to think that this Spyderco Smock was a small knife. Nope, it feels like a full-size knife now because I carry this. And I do find excuses to carry this knife. You might be wondering what, what it costs, okay? So this specific one costs $289 on Blade HQ. And if they're still available as the Blade HQ exclusive, exclusive I'll make sure to link it down below, as well as some other knives that I recommend. Knife Center also did an exclusive of this. Theirs has more of a you know satin titanium with orange micarta and it's M390. M390 also a great steel if you like edge retention, of course. Um, but CPM M4, the knife steel composition is rated that much higher. Now I am gonna take this opportunity to talk about 
edge retention because there's a lot of knife reviewers out there, knife tubers, if you will, who are like, you know, edge retention is not everything. You know, like it's not everything. There's, there's things like rust resistance and toughness and blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? The reason why most people subconsciously attribute edge retention to a higher quality steel is because a knife is only as good as it cuts. If a knife doesn't cut, it's just not as good. And so when you have this idea in your head of, well, if I don't have to sharpen it as often, that means that it's going to stay sh sharp longer. And what good is a knife that's not sharp? A knife that's not sharp is more dangerous and it's less useful. So you tell me if edge retention isn't something that's important to have. Maybe you're okay sharpening your knives a couple times a week after some heavy use, you know? But for the rest of us, we like the idea of having an edge that's going to stay an edge as long as possible because without an edge, this is just basically a, a knife shaped fidget spinner. Okay? So, little mini rant over CPMM4 is awesome. The blade shape, if you're wondering, is not actually a sheep's foot or a worn cliff. This is what they consider to be a reverse tanto. Reverse tanto also happens to be the shape of the Spyderco smock, which is why I went ahead and did that comparison real quick, is because I thought that they were, you know, both sheep of the same color, if you will. Maybe their feet are the same shape. I don't know. But listen, would I recommend this knife? And who would I recommend this knife to? Generally speaking, I would absolutely recommend this knife. If you're someone that's looking for a secondary carry, or maybe you just want a knife that doesn't look absurd or stand out a whole lot and you want it to be acceptable and you want it to feel like either gentleman's carry or maybe something that's just more mature. Maybe you're past the point of flashing knives in your life and you want something that makes sense. This is the everyday dad's carry. And even if you're not an everyday dad, you'll still be satisfied with the Pena X-Series Apache. That's all I got for you guys. If you like this video, make sure that you tap the like button. If you didn't like it, you know what to do. And as always, leave a comment and let me know what your opinion is. Personally, I think it's a great knife and you could do a lot worse for the money. I will see you in the next one.